Hey there and welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome to my channel and thank you so much for being here. As per usual, if you are new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave, and if you are a returning subscriber, hit that little bell down there for notifications on when I put up new videos. I upload twice a week. Before I get into the video, I want to quickly announce something kind of cool that I'm doing on my Patreon. If you didn't know this about me, I'm actually a certified life coach, and I've always wanted to kind of find a way to tie the two in together. So as of, I believe, April 9th, I will be teaching my first Patreon-only body positive class, and this one's gonna be all about learning to love your beach body. So if that's something that you guys would be interested in, definitely suggest checking out the description below. I'm gonna have links to my Patreon, and this is available for anyone who pledges a dollar and up. So it's relatively inexpensive if you guys wanna check it out. That's not what we're talking about today, even though it kind of is. I'm doing a question and answer video. I actually got a lot more questions this time around than I'm used to, so it makes doing this a little bit more fun. So without further ado, grab a snack, get comfortable, and let's get started. Okay, I really should be smart about this and put my glasses on, so that's what we're doing right now. I'm gonna start with the little Instagram post that I made. That wasn't the post. Okay. So, Chaim Ezra, I think is the way, right way to say it. What is your absolute favorite outfit to wear? I feel like I keep gravitating towards specific types of outfits, which is usually like anything that has gingham or fruit print in it. It's really hard for me to think of that. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but it's, it's way too difficult. Anything that includes my saddle shoes and my knee-high socks is probably probably the answer. <laughs> so Leah Ross asks, how do you find the confidence to wear something that shows off your belly line? I love the look of shorter, more crop tops, but my belly line is so obvious I have such a hard time with it. Well, Leah, <laughs> um, it has not been easy. I feel like that's a really hard one for me to answer as well. I don't know that I have the answer for that because I don't know that I don't know where I found the confidence. I don't know how the confidence came to me, but I think that the best way to summarize is that I was able to question my views on what my belly looked like in tight fitting clothes. Um, I was able to kind of accept my belly because that used to be a really, really insecure aspect of my body and might be for you too and might be for a lot of, you know, my viewers watching. And when I kind of re-looked at my belly and kind of tried to give it a little bit more love, that's when I was like, I want to. I don't want to feel like I have to constantly hide away from this. And then I was also missing out on a lot of styles too. Even if I like lost 100 pounds, I'd probably still have a visible belly outline in my outfit. So yeah, it's, um, it's not that easy, but I think just accepting and acknowledging that this is part of me and it's not an ugly part of me and that I'm losing out more than anyone else by not wearing the stuff that I truly, truly want to wear in this life um, is only going to affect me long term and nobody else. If you could only shop at three clothing stores for the rest of your life, which ones would you choose? I told you I would think about this, Devin the writer, um, and I didn't, and I really should have because now I'm totally stumped. But if I'm thinking about places, Eloqui, because I love them and they make really, really high quality clothing. Um, I want, I want to say Torrid as well, because Torrid's another one that has like really, really good clothes. And then on top of that, they have like lingerie and bras and stuff. So like practically I'm thinking if I could only shop at Torrid for the rest of my life along with Eloquy, I need to go somewhere for my my, you know, intimates and and towards a place that I tr I'm actually wearing a Torrid bra right now to be honest. I love Torrid bras. And then oh my gosh. Why do I feel anxiety right now? Why do I feel like I'm I'm not going to be able to shop at any other store if I don't answer this correctly? Um I want to say Forever 21. I have a love-hate relationship with them, but, oh my god, I feel like I just thought of another one. No, no. I feel like there's so many good staples at Forever 21. They always do fruit print, like, real well. So, 
I'd have to say Forever 21 as well. I cut down so much just there, but you guys, this literally took me like a solid 10 minutes to think of the answer. <laughs> Metal Mosquito 95 asks, where do you find confidence slash inspiration in wearing clothes that show so much curves? I feel like this kind of goes towards what Leah said and, and it really is just rethinking what I've been taught my whole life about my body and how I often was told at a very young age that this kind of body was not a body that was considered attractive. I mean, what have you, and that was like through media, through, you know, classmates who were just awful or, I mean, what have you, I'm, I'm sure you understand. And being able to prove myself wrong in so many ways has allowed me to rethink what this body is and how this body is like. I used to really think that this I was unattractive and I don't think that anymore. I think my body is attractive. I think my body is sexy. I like the way my curves are. I like the way, you know, my shoulders are and my thighs are and my hips are. Like there's so much about the way that I look that I genuinely appreciate now and I think that's where it comes from and where I'm able to find like the confidence to wear certain clothes. It's a video for another time because I know that this is just such a loaded question. And Sparkle and Spite asks, what are your favorite Canadian plus size clothing options? So I really like Pennington's. I have actually had a lot of luck at Pennington's. I do like Additionnel, although I don't really shop there too much. I just think that it's a little bit expensive. I don't know if you meant like necessarily just Canadian plus size stores, but I really like Old Navy as well. Old Navy has like a lot of really good staples and anytime I'm like in the vicinity of an Old Navy, I always go in and I almost always walk out with something. It sucks that like actual plus sizes aren't available in store because I really think that's like limiting to a lot of people, but I can sometimes fit in like XXL or XL. Um, who else? I mean, Torrid is available in Canada now, but I don't know if that would be like a Canadian plus size option and I'm betting you I'm forgetting some, but those are the ones that come to mind. So Megan, Meg, Androthy, I'm gonna pretend I just said your username right because I did not say that right. If money was no objects, what are the top three places you travel to? Okay, these are the kind of questions that I love because I get to, you know, be a little bit more personal. I have always, always wanted to go to Paris, France. So bad, so bad. That is my dream at some point in my life. I want to go there. I have been obsessed with France for a really, really long time. And then lately I've really, really wanted to go to Tokyo. Like I've realized through the past few years how absolutely stunning it is in Tokyo. And it just seems like such a beautiful place that you have to see once in your lifetime. It's just the thought of being in a plane for that long gives me so much anxiety so I could never go on my own. And then the third one, hmm, you know what? I really want to go to Greece. I want to go to Greece. I want to like see or anywhere that has just like such clear water and just be on like that beachy environment like so bad. Oh, and Netherlands. I saw some stuff from the Netherlands and it looks so beautiful. I I mean, that was four, but you know what? You get it. <laughs> so Yasminita says, how did you develop your current style as in what was your evolution like? Oh man. Okay, so I do actually have a video on like how I found my style. So if you want like something more in depth, look for that or I'll link to it. I'm not quite sure what I'll do yet, but for me, my style <laughs> developed much much later in my life. I was never a stylish person growing up, so I think for like a lot of people who knew me as a kid, for me to like be this into fashion is kind of a shock to them because I was not, I was not like that growing up. I definitely started off with like trying plus size fashion, um, and I used to when I was like a teen. I had this like, um, big red echo sweatshirt like do you guys remember those echo sweatshirts i had that i used to wear that all the time with like a pair of jeans and i'd have like my hair like back in a ponytail so that was a thing that i used to do and then i used to wear pajamas a lot <laughs> and then i discovered fashion and so i started off just like trying a bunch of things as most 
plus size people do when they realize things come in their size and then just sort of honed my style as I went on. If you really want to know, like see physical evidence, I would say go back to like almost the beginning of my blog. I wouldn't say like right at the beginning because a bunch of the images don't work and it makes me pretty sad, but you know what? If you really want to see the evolution, there it is. <laughs> Caitlin Hein, Hein? Heen? Hein? I'm saying it right? No. Nope. She asks, hello, I'm a fellow Apple. I have a huge fear of wearing clothes that accent my bigger belly, for example, tight pencil skirts or bodycon dresses, and I really want to wear them. I watch your videos and lo you look absolutely gorgeous in these, in these styles of clothing, but when I put them on my body, I just hate how I look. My question is, do you have any clothing fears and what's your advice for overcoming them? So, I feel like I kind of answered this in the beginning and from what I'm getting from these questions, I really need to make another apple shape video. I, I definitely still do have fears with clothing and what to wear. I am not super comfortable with my back fat. I try to um, expose myself and you guys to it in moments when I'm feeling vulnerable just to kind of like get myself out of that like scare. This is a scary body part of mine and that's a way that I've done it in the past. It's just like really um, expose myself to this area more and more and more but being that my back fat's like on my back I can't really see it that often so sometimes I'll catch an angle of it and be like oh okay that's that's a lot of back fat that's my body it, it's really just about getting comfortable with the area like you know learning to appreciate it in many ways it does help that I had um previous relationships with guys who were very fond of the belly I don't know I've never really like been into like the sexualization of it and ways to kind of have those experiences with it where it was like a really appreciated part on me whereas previously I always felt like I had to like I had to be embarrassed of it so that was a way and I will definitely be like answering all these apple shaped questions in depth in a later video, promise. Licks 24 nm probably not saying that right, asks, what are three essential pieces of clothing that you feel every woman should own? What is the best brand of un undergarments you have found? I really don't know that I have three essential pieces that every woman should own. I think this is so specific and personal to everyone's like style and what they feel uh, they like and they don't like. Um, and the best undergarments, are we talking like panties, bras, or other stuff? Because if we're talking like bras, I really like Torrid bras. I also really like Additionnel bras and really like Lane Bryant bras. Those are the three that I've really, really found to work for me. And panties, same kind of venue. I also really like Dormy panties. The bras are good, but they, I don't think that they compare to the bra lifespan that I've had with like Torrid, Additionnel, and you know, Lane Bryant. So. Adorkably Aga, that's a cute name, asks, if you could steal the wardrobe of any fictional character, who would it be? Oh, you know what? When I used to watch, um, oh, is it just called The Mindy Show? It is just called The Mindy Show. Yes, The Mindy Show. When I used to watch The Mindy Show, I loved everything she wore, like, everything. She had a really good wardrobe, so probably that, but I'm genuinely telling you, I had an answer to this question, and I was like, yes, that's exactly who it would be, and I can't remember who. So if I remember it in the editing process, it will be right here. Kelly Danielle asks, what do you use for heat styling products and hair products? So Kelly, I actually don't use heat on my hair from time to time. I'll use a blow dryer, but I like made a point not to use heat products. I actually do a lot of like pin curling and stuff like that to maintain like my hair health. Um, and my favorite hair products, I mean, it's a 10 is really good. I really like the coconut, it's like the, co the coconut penetrating oil from OGX is really good as well. I like how that makes the hair look. I also like the um, living proof um, split end repair. I like that too for just making my ends look like really, really nice. So Caitlin Anderson asks, do you have a favorite brand of shorts to wear under dresses? I just bought a pair and I feel like I have to fix them every other minute because they ride up my legs. I do. So I have a pair of under summers. They are really good. I like them a lot. The only thing is a lot of my dresses or even skirts hit like mid thigh and they're a little bit too long. And I feel like with a lot of plus size companies, 
They often think that most of us wear our skirts like a little longer, so they tend to make the leg a little longer. I also really like, um, what's it called? Thigh Society, those are really, really good. Um, in terms of things not rolling up, it doesn't give me those issues is like an anti-chub rub ointment. Any shorts that I wear, no matter what I do, they're gonna roll up. So then Paula Montero asks, do you speak Portuguese? No, unfortunately, and it makes me very, very sad. I can speak a few words. There are a few, like, sayings that I picked up from my mother. I just, I wish I spoke it fluently, but when I was younger, I, I went to Portuguese school and I hated it so much. And then I got stung by a bee, like, right here. And I, oh my god, there's a pimple there that's driving me insane. And it just, it, it was like my reason for never going back. Younger me was just like, I've never been stung by bee anywhere. It's like the curse of being at Portuguese school. So, you know what? I, I never got stung again, so maybe I was onto something. <laughs> Abby K. Clark asks, what's your favorite song right now? I don't really know that I have a favorite song right now, but right before I was recording this video, as it was like getting set up, I had that song, Hey Mickey, stuck in my head. Then Victoria Donnelda, my favorite, asks, what's your favorite part of styling an outfit? What part is the most difficult for you? My favorite part is, is when like I've put an outfit together in my head and when I put it on my body, it's like perfect. It, it just like looks beautiful. That's like my favorite part. Believe it or not, my least favorite part about outfits is like accessorizing because I really feel like that's one area that I still struggle with. And also I feel like I just don't have enough in my wardrobe to really execute looks like the way that I want. If I just had like access to all the accessories and shoes in the world, I could probably style an outfit like that. It's just that sometimes I'm like, God, if I had if I had shoes like that, this would be a perfect outfit and I just I just have those moments. That's like probably the most difficult for me easily. And I think yeah, I think that's it. That was fun. That was um a lot more in depth than I've had in my previous videos, so I had a lot of fun answering those questions. If you guys want me to do this again, let me know. Ask me some questions. I will actually remember to answer those next time because I just realized I asked you guys to do that last time. And to quickly remind you, if you guys want to learn more about that Patreon life skill style class that I'm teaching, make sure you are checking out my description. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video, so don't forget you can find new videos for me every Wednesday and every Sunday, and new blog posts every Tuesday and every Thursday, and I'll see you next time. Bye!